We're now joined by Kevin D. Bitten of the Kevin and Nikki podcast that airs on iHeartRadio out of Philly. Kevin, welcome to the conversation. It's been a couple of weeks since we lost uh, John Singleton, one of the uh, generational, great generational directors of our time. What legacy do you think he left on filmmaking? A legendary, iconic legacy, uh, definitely a trailblazer, a pioneer, uh, a legacy that will never be forgotten, maybe even perhaps never be replaced. And um, there's so many you know, adjectives that you can use to describe the legacy of John Singleton. And um, I think legendary, iconic, might be even putting it lightly. Over 10 films he has created, directed, and a lot of them has been received with critical acclaim. What are your thoughts on some of those films that help to perpetuate the negative stereotype of African-Americans, films such as Baby Boy or Boys in the Hood? Well, actress Nikki Warren and I had the opportunity to interview him at the Snowfall premiere in Philly. And um, I asked him a question. I referenced him as a risk taker. And in connection to you know, what you've asked in terms of being critically acclaimed, he said, I'm just telling a story. You know, I'm just telling what's happening out here. This is just what's going on. And of course, we know that you know, a lot of movies that he made uh, spoke to urban culture and what was going on in the inner cities and things like that. And of course, in film, there can always be ex exaggerations in terms of stereotypes or deemed stereotypical. But uh, he was just telling a story. And sometimes when you tell the story the way that it is, you know, you are going to assume perhaps a critically acc acclaimed title. He just told the story and uh, kind of put it out there and you kind of had to take it or leave it, so to speak. You yourself are an actor, 80 plus credits to your name as a actor, a working actor. The legacy of John Singleton, how has that impacted your career? It has impacted my career greatly. Uh, like the old saying goes, some people plant seeds, some people water, a tree grows up, and then there's others who benefit from the shade. So John Singleton, along with all the other pioneers that have come before him, uh, you know, they planted seeds, they watered the seeds, a tree grow, grew up, and uh, I'm benefiting from it today. So I have opportunities because of the legacy of John Singleton that I wouldn't have, have otherwise had, uh, had it not been for him. So I'm thankful and grateful uh, to him. And I'm thankful and grateful to him, you know, for being so gracious to uh, do an interview on our show. The Kevin and Nikki podcast airs on iHeartRadio. You yourself, an actor, has mentioned 80 plus credits. What's most rewarding for you and challenging? Let's actually begin with the challenge first. As an independent actor, what's most challenging? Okay. Well, as an independent uh, actor, uh, I think it's those challenges that face independent filmmakers that kind of affect us as independent actors, so to speak. I don't really want to classify as independent actors, but actors in general. Um, you have uh, financing, you know, uh, you know, production value when you're in the independent realm uh, that can be challenging. Uh, you have video on demand, so we know now that you know, it, things are changing. You know, some 20 or 30 years ago, you would have never heard of a commercial saying now streaming live on Amazon Prime or, or, or Hulu. It was, it was more so in theaters everywhere or in select theaters. So, you know, our uh, movie screens have changed such that now our phones are movie, uh, movie screens. And so while there's widespread distribution online, you know, there's a financial drop in terms of, uh, you know, financial get back. Uh, so you have uh, creative control, you know, you have people that are making great films and things like that. And so, you know, if you want to get that film on a, a major platform, you know, you kind of give up creative control, which could lead to uh, recasting, which definitely affects us as independent actors who are trying to, uh, you know, get our names out there. There is a brand component of this thing. We want to get our names out there, our faces out there. And, uh, you know, when you give up creative control because of the independent market, uh, sometimes you can run the risk of getting uh, recast. Uh, then there's community, you know, do you have an independent community that's going to come together? and put their resources together to make content as, as opposed to being independent islands. So there's a lot of things. You have distribution, 
Uh, so there's a lot of things that affect us, but you know, you just have to continue to stay positive and stay on the grind. Let's talk about the rewarding uh, aspect of being an uh, actor, a filmmaker. What are the rewarding parts of what you do? Um, just being able to affect people positively is one of many rewards. Um, to go to a premiere and sit among the audience and to be able to make them laugh or make them cry or, or make them not like you, you know, make them remember, you know, they say if, if you can make someone feel, they always remember you. But just to be able to impact and affect people in a positive way, you know, we're actors, we're servants to the world. We, you know, we take people on a journey, on our journey, by allowing them to connect with characters. We provide a much needed escape in a world full of pain and suffering, where when people are watching us on TV and on the big screen, they're not worried about their problems and, and things of the sort. They're connecting with us, you know. Being able to provide a platform for my family to get together, other than funerals, you know. They're getting together at my premieres and, and, and things like that. It's just so great, my award shows. and It's just so awesome. And then just to be able to meet all the great, wonderful, super talented people like yourself, Mike, uh, doing great things in the industry, being able to shake hands, take pictures with, connect with people who you've watched growing up on TV and now they're your friends and developing relationships. And I think that's uh, one of the most rewarding things is the relationship that you cultivate in uh, throughout this journey. The, the awards are extra. If you, know, if you get those, you get them. Sure. But the, but the, but the uh, relationships are just phenomenal. You are super busy, as you mentioned, over 80 credits to your name. Uh, you're constantly on the grind. Every time I look around, I see film starring Kevin D. Benton. What projects are you working on now that you can actually speak of? I know there's an uh, NDA out there floating around, but what's uh, popping for you? Uh, well, right now I'm filming a TV series, web series called Pride, and um, I'm looking forward to this character because he plays, uh, I play a character named James Pride, who's the opposite of who I am. He's just a mean, cold-hearted guy who's a drug lord and don't care about anything but getting his money. So I'm looking this forward to- This is not the Kevin I know, as you mentioned. Not me. <laughs> Maybe different from the Kevin I know. <laughs> That's and characters you've played in the past. <laughs> uh, like a character I played in the past? No, it's completely different than the characters you've oh, played okay. in the past. Uh, I played a character, uh, of course, I played, uh, a character who was sexually harassing people, women on the job. Okay. And, uh, that was, it, it was a challenge. Of yeah. course, not being me, but the young lady who I was in the scene with, you know, because you have to make sure that your, your scene partner is safe. Sure, sure. And so, you know, we become emotionally invested in the character, but at the same time, we're still human. And so I had to, move into our personal space, which was a little uncomfortable, but as an actor, you know that, you know, you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Oh, um, sure, 100%. Another Tell character. a little bit about this voodoo character that you're playing, some type I, of voodoo. Yeah, I'm going to play a voodoo witch doctor, and I'm really, really looking forward to this character because I'm going to have um, a mask, I'm going to have prosthetics, and they're going to go all out to make this character uh, you want to say, look, Hollywood, for lack of a better phrase. And, uh, you know, this, 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 this is what I look, at, look forward to because I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, characters that I put a lot of makeup on and masks. I've seen it done, and I've always wanted to be a part of it. So I'm looking forward to getting into this character and seeing if I can make it believable, and I know that I will. Well, congratulations, Mr. Kevin D. Benton, on all your success. Thank you for joining us today on The Conversation. I'm quite sure there's much more. Uh, success for you to come in the future. Thanks so much, Mike, and continued success uh, to you as well. And thanks for having me on the show.